Welcome back to the Wolf of Queen Street podcast series. Welcome back to the audio podcast or the YouTube series if you join us today. Today I'm doing, joined by Dr. Israel McGookin, who, who, is uh, who has founded and started the Capital Royal Dynasty, an international apostolic ministry that spans several countries and through that journey has taken in front of the most, some of the most important people in the world and across 80 different countries. He's also the founder of of the I Say Yes coaching company and, co uh, and coaching academy, where he goes, inspires, and changes lives all over the world by showing people the right way to do things and to take control of their lives and become a better person. And I'm so excited about the show today, and thank you, Dr. Israel, for coming on. My pleasure, and thank you, Lawrence, for having me. So to anyone that's having a listen to the show, we'll obviously uh, hear a little bit that um, Israel has got a bit of a South African twang to him. And it was funny enough as when we, uh, when we were reaching, I was reaching out to him to find that he had some of his past origins in the same city that I grew up of, Cape Town, South Africa. Right. I love that city. <laughs> love, love that city, Lawrence. I, I think I, city. I think everyone that has been through that city at some stage in their life um, will thoroughly enjoy it. Just what it offers. It's it's a pity to how things are going at the moment, but it still holds its pure beauty and its pure Absolutely. exhilaration um, to anywhere else in the world. And it's uh, it's an amazing place to have grown up on, seen, and experienced. Right. So, as I said, is uh, the Capital Royal Dynasty uh, a ministry that you founded um, and sort of impacting the world in, in that sense? Take us through that journey and that story about yourself. All right, sure. Well, coming out of South Africa, as you mentioned, uh, mm -hmm. mandatory uh, military, uh, came out of military, uh, which, which really imparted to me a discipline mm -hmm. that I actually lacked beforehand. So, i uh, thankful for that time. Uh, although it was mandatory and we had no option, went through that, came out of that and uh, wanted to be a minister. Mm -hmm. And so uh, did Bible school, uh, studied, uh, got my qualification and then started this journey of uh, ministry. Mm -hmm. And that took me on a road of, of realizing that I'm in the people's business, mm -hmm. The people's business and yeah. I, I, I better get to know people yeah. if I'm in the people's business and so anyway so I began to study people uh, so not only study God but study people mm -hmm. and that took me on a different journey uh, in ministry where I felt that I wanted to pioneer something fresh that actually addressed the lives of people and the state they were in where they're at and how we could get them to a better place to what they're in mm -hmm. uh, as opposed to often religion says hang on until uh the end yeah and if you're good enough you'll make it to heaven <laughs> uh, I, okay. I, I wanted people i wanted people to to live the life now here on earth yeah uh fully uh in their maximized uh, capacity and so that was my journey and so i began to uh, pioneer something pressure ngo a non-profit organization mm -hmm. uh, called Capital Royal Dynasty, which ended up spanning uh, literally all the continents of the earth uh, and took me around the world. And so uh, my, my principle in all of that was not just to do church on a Sunday, but to impact lives uh, and leadership. Leadership was a key factor in what I was doing because I studied that 97%, Lawrence, mm -hmm. of all humanity are followers. Yeah, that's true. Ninety-seven percent of followers can you believe it. That is that is crazy, right? And therefore, they would right. always look. They would look for a strong leader or look for someone to lead them, whether it is in a good way or in a bad way. Unfortunately, as right, well. exactly, exactly. That was my point, because they were gullible, mm -hmm. and they looked for the control leader or the strong leader or the dominant leader, and they just followed that guy or that girl, uh, wherever that guy or girl would go. Yep. Where I, where I wanted people to think for themselves. Mm -hmm. think, and I think that's, that's a great part of leadership. So we began training people. So we would have a different schools that we set up and we trained 2,000 people a year mm -hmm. for many, many years just to train them to think for themselves and to become the leader uh, that they should be. And it's so great, you know, I spoke to Israel off the air and to a lot of people that's aware is, um, I'm not a very religious person 
uh, in my life, never have been, and it's just part of my journey. But one thing is, and I totally agree with you, um, Israel, on this, is that most religions, irrespective of a religion out there, it is follow follow the A to Z, and right at the end, there'll be your carrot. Or right at the end, right. there's the offering that you've got to do, and you've got to go through the whole journey and be perfect within these rule sets, irrespective of if you believe in the rule sets or not, to get the carrot. And it's, I can understand why now people have, that have reached out to me said, hey, hold on, Israel is doing something different, or he has done something different in the sense of that you're putting the emphasis of not just – following these guidelines but let's actually live our life not Absolutely. waiting for the carrot at the end let's become a better person or version of ourselves in that framework itself because that is something a lot of them very few religions that i'm aware of put that emphasis on itself right. as the fundamental to say to say we actually week on week we're not going to naturally just worry about scripture we're actually going to worry uh, we're going to ensure that you're a better person you're a better leader, you're a better person towards your society, and that's how we're going to make sure that you're taking this this message and passing it on to the next uh, the next culture or the next generation as well. Absolutely, absolutely. You know, I think the thing is, you know, the the understanding your genesis, mm -hmm. of where you come from, who you are, uh, and why were you born. Mm -hmm. What is the reason? why you were put on this earth yeah was it just some miserable mistake uh of two people one night in the back of a pickup truck sort of thing or, or was it or was it a purpose thing mm -hmm. and for me in my understanding uh it's a purpose thing and so i i was uh, uh born with purpose and i think that's something that i like to identify in people's lives and something funny lawrence i was in south africa I'd been overseas. I lived in Belgium for many years, yep. uh, 15 years at that time, lived in the States, uh, felt like going back to South Africa. So I moved back to Cape Town. And one of the things I wanted was a, a good old Land Rover, <laughs> the real deal, yeah. South African deal, you know, the Defender. And I had enough money. So I went in and, and bought a Land Rover Defender cash. Yep. And uh, I said, I want that one. You know, the salesman said, sure pick it up in two days. I, I went back in two days. I got in and I didn't fit. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know why, you know, the, it's British, obviously not South African, but the South African boy's a little bigger. Yep. And, and so I didn't fit in that car. So they adjusted the seat for me, moved it back, moved it sideways so I could fit in this thing. Uh, now, mind you, it, my car in the States was an S-Class Mercedes, mm -hmm. uh, full of luxury. My Defender, I pick it up. I drive out of the garage with this thing and I realized what the hairy have I done? <laughs> yeah, they're not comfortable. <laughs> because it was like a bad truck. Yeah. And I looked for the air conditioning. I had to flip the little switches for, for air to come in naturally. Yeah. I went to push the button for the windows. I had to wind it down. And I realized, wow, this car does not suit me. Mm -hmm. And so anyway, drove it for almost a year. The seat breaks. I go back to the dealership. I mad with the the, the salesman, I said, you sold me a piece of rubbish of junk. And he said, with all due respect to your intelligence, Dr. Israel, you bought a purpose-built vehicle. Yep. And if you want to have comfort and luxury, go around the corner and buy yourself a Jaguar. I said, I'm doing just that. And I went around, <laughs> bought myself a Jaguar, was happy ever after. But the, 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 the moral of the story is that vehicle was purpose-built. Mm-hmm. It had a function and apply the function that is built for you'll have success. Correct. And, and so here's Lawrence. He's sitting here podcasting today. Uh, he is purpose built. I am purpose built. The watches are purpose built. Discovering the purpose yep. will allow you to have your success. And that's what I did with my leadership training and development. Uh, why were they here? Not when will they escape? You know, that's a, it's a great story about how you're explaining that part of buying the vehicle and I can totally understand and, uh, and uh, 
you know, being South African, uh, we are large mammals. We are larger than normal yeah. structures. Anyone that uh, sees in the sport, and I can have a, a bit of a giggle of you trying to climb in the climb in the car, and not fit in there, and totally understand it. Of being purpose built, it's not made. If you come in there, and it's it's something we see in society today, where people go in, and it's funny enough, I was talking to someone last night about it, is that everything in life at the moment is, or businesses try to make a quick dollar or try to make a quick buck, right. is they buy they build specific products for specific reasons and right. then they go hey this specific product for a specific reason irrespective of what your niche is let's give it to everyone and try and get it to everyone and everyone goes okay i want one of those and then everyone gets it and then uh, 30 percent of it work because for them that falls in their niche and forms for their style but for the other 70 percent right. It's like, well, it's not exactly perfect, but I'll stick with it and so forth. And it's, it's the realization of a lot of people now and business that can hold on. We've got to be real specific on what we're offering. We've got to be Absolutely. real unique in what we're trying to message out there and put out there so that people that we will capture are the right 5% or 10%. And we might right. have to evolve our product four or five times or four or five different versions depending where someone is on the spectrum of being a leader or wanting to uh, be a coach and so forth as in sort of your i say yes coaching company and i'm guessing you right. i'm guessing the way you're talking at the moment is something that you do in your coaching companies you offer different levels because we're not, we're not all the same absolutely right now we go right from the mom entrepreneur yep right up to the president of a country Mm -hmm. uh, or a Fortune 500 company, uh, I've done the whole spectrum. Everyone is important to me. Correct. But, but uh, the product uh, has to meet the need of that person. Remember, you know, all we're doing is solving problems. Correct. Uh, that's who we are. We are problem solvers. Uh, and so to identify the, the problem and to, to get the right solution is a key, uh, again, to you moving forward and what you're doing successfully. Yep, um, I love that, and and it's so great to see as well is that even though it's two different spaces of doing it in you know coaching academy and it's uh, a, a religious uh, ministry that you got in it, you're bringing both skills across the board, and you're bringing both things right. that you're offering across the board. So the same fundamentals that you're doing in the ministry is you're bringing in your I say yes coaching company, and that, and that and that I say yes coaching company, and as well as the academy, like you said, is taking you from the mom entrepreneur to actual presidents or you know fortune 500 people in a, uh, companies or uh, owners and so forth and i can imagine um there being a lot further in-depth discussions there but as you said at each to, uh, once you get to that situation it's sort of the similar steps that you follow once you understand their why and their purpose and trying to and, and trying Absolutely. to push them further right well you know lawrence all people are people it doesn't mm -hmm. matter what position they hold or what function they have People are people. Whether you're president of a country uh, or whether you're mom at home, uh, all are the same. You know, mm -hmm. I think there's probably four different categories, and we talk about that in pers different personalities. Yep. You know, there's not that many different personality types uh, for humanity. Yep. Uh, and so that's that's why for me, understanding people, knowing the people game, and knowing you're in the people game, is so important for anything you do. And so anyone watching here today, I can help you by helping you understand who you are. Mm -hmm. uh, so I was talking about your I am uh, before we talk about your I do. Yep. Uh, so, so a lot of times, you know, when I meet somebody for the first time, hey, I'm Israel. Hey, John. Uh, what do you do, John? Mm -hmm. And I ask the person what they do. And John tells me what it does. I'm, I'm a bus driver uh, for the local bus company here. And immediately, you know what I do? Mm -hmm. I categorize him. I categorize him. I form an opinion about him. And I put him in a certain category that he's never going to come out as long as I know him. Yep. Uh, because I've, I've defined him. You know, he's a bus driver. Uh, or, or we said, I'm a president. I'm, oh, okay, he's a president. Uh, and unfortunately, we define people by their doing and not by their being. I'm a human being, not a human doing. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I'd rather know Lawrence for who he is and then discover what he does. Because you may be a bus driver today and the president of a Fortune 500 company tomorrow. Uh, Correct. Because you're in a process. Yep. 
and and I don't I don't want to limit you to this point in your process. I I want to open that whole chapter up for you, the whole book up for you to say where are you going to? Mm -hmm. What what is your true north? And so in my coaching, uh, always that's what I'm asking, Lawrence. What is your true north? Uh, what is your life goal? What do you want to write on your tombstone? Uh, at the end of the day, what is it that's going to pass on to the next generation? Uh, and so my life goal is very simple. It's to inspire somebody every single day of my life. Mm -hmm. My life goal is not money. Now, I have goals for money. I have goals for wealth creation. But my life goal, what, what keeps me breathing and living is to inspire somebody. Now, I used to be a very bad-tempered Irish South African. <laughs> I knew how to use my fists, uh, even represented South Africa with karate uh, at times. So that was my world of fighting. Mm -hmm. uh, but that wasn't very inspiring to the person I fought. Yep. Right? And so now I'm driving down the road. Somebody cuts me off. The first thing I want to do is go like this. I think of my life goal. I think of my true north to inspire somebody every day. And I ask the question, Lawrence, Will this inspire that person yeah. or frustrate that person? No, it's going to frustrate them. Put your hand down, drive the car, be nice, mm -hmm. uh, and inspire. So it governs me. Yep. When I have a true, true north and a life goal, it governs me. I, I totally agree with that. And it's something I've seen uh, with a few people I've spoken to over the last uh, few months is understanding, you know, you're talking about your true north, is understanding your why. You know, why... Pretty much the same sort of some, uh, motive is what is your why? What are you doing and everything else? Absolutely. And I love and I love the story how you said about when we meet someone, we put them into a bucket of what they do, not what they are. Right. And right. for anyone that has followed anything in the business world or in the real world, any the top guys out there, uh, you know, look at the top guys of Jeff Bezos and all those guys. They they are the moguls today, but thirty years ago they were working at um, McDonald's or selling, not selling, but obviously selling books, but working at McDonald's, working in a fast food chain, couldn't hold a job. Um, the, the fan of Alibaba, I think got fired 10 times in his first 10 years of business because he couldn't hold a, a keep a job. Uh, Jack Ma, um, his name. And at that moment, if you met that person and said, okay, he's a fast food worker, as put him in that box, and he always kept in that box, and 30 years later, he owns one of the largest companies in the world, you know, it doesn't, there's no relation to that in understanding that. And it's definitely something we've got to look at as a society and a culture to try and understand that. And it, it'll bring out, I believe it'll bring out less judgment as well, because if we understand truly where a person is, and, and I've seen it in my life experience, and I'm sure Israel, you've seen it in yours, where you meet someone and they say they do X or they do Y. And then you only meet them for a short period of time. So you, you, you unfortunately make that picture about them. And then right. a month later or six months later or a year later, you see them actually be who they are. You see them in an environment that gives them their purpose. And you go, right, right. holy shit. That, right. that is totally left field to the picture that I'd put there for them because they are right. in the environment and they, they're controlling, they're conquering, they're getting over everything and they've just been successful in that space at that moment. And then you go, that is actually the person's picture. That is actually who they truly Absolutely. are. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I think that's our responsibility or my responsibility mm -hmm. as a leader, uh, as a coach, as a minister, uh, is not to bring judgment on somebody. Mm -hmm. but rather to discover who they are and, yeah. and understand their pain points and understand their triggers and, and the why they, they respond like they do, the why do they uh, uh, reject things or walk away from things, you know, uh, whatever that pain point is or that, that triggers, I call it a soul damage. Mm -hmm. uh, life is such, we go through it. You know, we all have had our good, our positive, negative experiences uh, and a forms us for the now, but that doesn't mean that's where we're going to stay. Mm -hmm. You know, I, South Africa schooling, you know, we had three tiers, you know, you ha had high, uh, uh, upper grade, whatever they call that. Mm. I, I don't even know what they were there. That was high <laughs> grade, it was high grade, high grade and standard grade pretty much. Uh, um, and it could have been, grade. yeah. 
And then there was a, a lesser one in my time <laughs> <laughs> where you could only, all you needed was 33 and a third percent to pass. Yeah. I mean, no, that's all you know. That's not much. Yeah. Um, and I, I failed all the time. I was the dummy at school. I was not the smartest crack and jack. Uh, and they defined me. They put me in woodwork while I was useless with my hands. They put me in metal while I was useless with my hands. Uh, so well, they said, your academics are bad, your hands are bad. Well, there's pretty much no hope for you, you know. <laughs> uh, so, but that's not the case. Yep. I didn't stay there. You know, because their system didn't suit. I didn't fit the system. Correct. I fitted something else. And so, uh, you know, I never like to, to judge people, define people. I don't care what, you, what, what you're busy with right now. I know there can be a better tomorrow for you. I know but, that. Correct. And I want to help you get there. Uh, it's awesome. I love, um, I love that message. One thing I've been thinking about as you've been talking about the moment is I can imagine over the last few years or through the whole journey, you must see outside of what we just spoken about the moment of the judgment or the sort of putting the person in a specific group or bucket is you must be seeing some other underlying continuous societal problems that you're having to break down or knock down for people to take actually the one step in the right direction. Is there something that you've seen sort of a common theme coming at the moment? Because I can imagine, and I speak about this a lot as well, is obviously social media, the social world um, has had a, as much as ha has had a positive impact on certain people and certain societies and cultures. It's also had a very dramatic negative impact uh, right. around people's cultures, their beliefs, their understandings, their perception of the real world, as well as the mental state, which is one of the, the biggest problems to, um, in our society today is the mental state of people because we're always looking at stuff and going, that person's living a perfect life. That person's living a perfect life. That right. person's got a really flash car and a lot of people don't realize on example in Instagram is all those guys standing in front of Ferraris in front of houses and 90% of those are rented and they're there for the photo shoot. It's not theirs. They're living at home still with their mom pretty much. But it's, it's perception yeah. and it puts that pressure on the younger culture today, the, the 13, 14, 15 year olds that are coming through that code. Right. I want that. How do I get that? Why is my life so boring? Why is my life so nothing when these people have everything and they look like they dropped out of school and now they're success? But a lot right. of it's smoke and mirrors, unfortunately. Absolutely, absolutely. I think the peer pressure has changed. Mm -hmm. You know, we used to have a certain type of peer pressure at school uh, or, you know, live up to the Joneses next door. Mm -hmm. uh, but that was our world, the next door neighbor, how he lived. Uh, but pretty much he was in the same class group that we were in anyway. Uh, but now we, we're looking at this Instagram, for instance, and you're so right. I just actually coached somebody the other day. I told him, stop lying on Instagram. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, you have a nine to five day job and you posting Ferraris and Lamborghinis in the <laughs> yeah. driveway. Yeah. You know, get get real. It's not a true story because, and it's driving. It's almost like a, a, the fear of missing out. Yep. Uh, comes into to the people who don't have those things, and all of a sudden they change their true north to someone else's. Which will bring them to to somebody else's true north. Uh, and I'm different to you. My my success will look different to your success, and I'm going to be satisfied with that. Uh, I've got to accept my success journey uh, for what it is. I'm, I'm purpose built again. So understanding that, embracing that uh, is where your success lies. And I tell you what, people say uh, uh, money uh, doesn't buy happiness. Well, l let's talk about that. You know, if you've never been rich, you wouldn't understand. Uh, but I lived on Table Bay uh, mm -hmm. on the ocean, looking at Table Mountain in a 9,000 square foot home, uh, Tuscany Villa, you know, drove my luxury vehicles uh, and was very wealthy. And then I lost everything. Mm -hmm. I went through what I call a tsunami and I lost everything. And when I lost everything, was I the same person, yes or no? And, and Interesting. Well, that's, that's, yeah, that's the point. And so I had to discover that indeed, fundamentally, I was the same person, mm -hmm. but I'd also become a pseudo person. And so I remember a story. I was, uh, uh, I drove a Range Rover 
uh, in South African Cape Town. Uh, very nice. Uh, my daughter, for her 21st birthday, I gave her a, Mercedes, a, a BMW 3 Series uh, for her birthday. And I had to go pick it up from the dealership. Uh, and so I went there and picked it up. And I was driving this BMW 3 Series. And I was so embarrassed, Lawrence, uh, driving this car. Uh, because it was such a girly little thing and such a ch El Cheapo and, and such a low level machine. Mm -hmm. uh, and anyway, I go on my journey, I lose everything. And I'm pretty much homeless and carless. Yep. L literally, I lost everything and uh, millions. And well, at the end of the day, uh, I need to pick somebody up from the airport. A friend of mine who has a three series BMW says, Hey, Israel. Use my car. Don't take that brush bucket you borrowed. Mm -hmm. Take my car, pick your guests up. So I borrowed this BMW and I forgot the thoughts I had earlier. Yep. I'm driving this BMW and I'm feeling really cool, you know. <laughs> like I've, I've, I've made it. I've been, whoa, I'm driving a BMW again. <laughs> and then I remembered, wow, how arrogant I was to look down upon this car just a year ago. Mm -hmm. And I realized that, you know, although fundamentally I was the same, my world had shaped differently and I thought differently. Mm -hmm. And although I thought I was normal, I'd lost sight of reality. Yep. I'd lost sight of real people, what real people go through, the pain of real people. And that was a big eye opener to me, how my thinking had changed. Uh, but my fundamentals were the same. And so I could get back up again. Mm -hmm. My thermostat was still set high, so I could yep. still get back up again. But I was embarrassed and disappointed with myself on how I had, uh, or what I'd become in this materialistic world, you know? Yeah, uh, I totally understand that. And it's, again, the people that have broken through, the people that are the best in their area and the best in their niche and stuff, are the people that have stayed true to who they are. Uh, the, be the best sportsmen, the best coaches, the best politicians, if there's a good politician out there, but hey, um, so forth, they have stayed and those sort of 1% one, one of the 1% is they are still today who they were 20 years ago when they came through that right. has never changed. And yet society is driving this way of be, be someone else, be someone differently, be and so forth. And it's always the famous saying, there's only ever going to be one Michael Jordan. Why try and why try and be a Michael Jordan? You're never going to be. He was one of no. the greatest, and he was only ever going to be him. And it's again something I listen to David Goggins quite a bit, and he's quite a, the the hardest man in the world and a very big motivational speaker. And he always says that when you run in a race, the only person you should be trying to beat is yourself. We need Absolutely. to stop. We need to stop the story of I'm running a race and I've got to beat everyone else around me because. Everyone else around me's race is different to mine. Everyone else around me's view, opinions, drive is totally different to mine. And this can be shown, taking it back to a historical moment, uh, but on the sports side is look at the old famous Mike Tyson versus Buster, Buster Douglas, where Mike Tyson, the, the most violent, most dangerous man in the world, and I still believe that today, even in his, when he's 50 or in his 50s, went afford a nobody, Buster Douglas, and it should have been an easy walk. But at that split moment, Buster Douglas's race, he had just lost his mother. His emotional state was different to him. Right. That it was the most important, critical second or moment of his life was that fight that he was fighting Mike Tyson. Where to Mike Tyson, it wasn't. That it was just another right. step along the ladder. And it's when you're going to compete against someone else because you think you're going to beat them. Unfortunately, some days you're not going to come off well at all. And right, he, right. He, Richard had it. Buster Douglas knocked Mike Tyson out. And he was never this, Mike Tyson was never the same after that. But if you keep true right. to your race and yourself and trying to always beat yourself, not saying having to be better of yourself every day, but looking inwards of yourself and going, I'm going to focus on what's pushing me and driving me. Not what's pushing Israel, not his success, not his right, money right. and so forth. What I can achieve, I think there'll be so much um, more happiness and better emotional and mental state around us. Right, absolutely. I, I call it the authentic self. Mm -hmm. yeah, I love uh, that. I am. When I talk about the I am, I'm talking about your authentic self. Mm -hmm. uh, and not performing for anyone uh, out there, but being the best version of you. 
uh, your difference will cause success, mm -hmm. not your uniformity. Yep. That's why religion doesn't work. It uniforms everyone. Instead of celebrating the difference, the diverse colors, the, the, the different manifold colors that, that is on the earth, you know, uh, let's celebrate the other person's difference and, and celebrate who you are. I think, I think that's what, you know, be happy with yourself. Look in the mirror and be happy with yourself. Uh, have a certain appreciation for who you are uh, and respect for who you are and honor for who you are and, and just work with that, you know. And then go out into society and, and synergize with people mm -hmm. and together you become great. Yeah, totally agree with that. You just mentioned at the moment, and we spoke about it a, a little bit in the beginning, and I'd like to go into a bit more is that is what you mentioned. That is why uh, religion doesn't work in the sense of talking about uh, thinking about uniqueness yourself and that sort of stuff. And I know we spoke in the beginning about the, the ways that you bring in your thought patterns and the way you, you tell people to be a better of their version of themselves within the religious uh, path that you've taken. I can imagine not everyone has agreed on your path in your in Christianity and in the path that you've taken. How do you try and get across that? How do you try and say, yes, I'm still offering religious guidance, what we're doing, but I also want to make a better person because, as you said, and as I said previously, a lot of religions, unfortunately, are within a set guidelines, and these are the rules that you're following, and a little bit of what you're doing might not be seen as within that space. You're not breaking any rules, you're not breaking any guidelines, but you're not focusing on set your journey and wait for the carrot. You're actually saying, right. that's the underline, but we still want to actually improve a person on a day to day. So I'm just right. wanting to know if there was been if there was any pushback or any challenges within that circles around what you're trying to achieve uh, to better people in uh, on the religious side. Right. Uh, a lot of pushback, a lot of pushback. Uh, because, you know, as a man thinks, the Bible says a man thinks in his heart, mm -hmm. so is he. Uh, that's a principle of life. The way you think is the way you behave. Yep. And your results are attached to your behavior. So by one better results, they'll be changed the way I think. It'll change the way I behave. All right. Now, in, in religion, a lot of religion is fear-based. Mm-hmm. They, they terrify you, they put imposed discipline on you, uh, and they, they scare you out of hell. Yep. Into heaven. Uh, but I don't want to, I don't want to be scared of hell and therefore I choose heaven. Mm -hmm. I want to choose heaven because I believe in heaven. Correct. Uh, not because I'm afraid of something. Now imposed discipline, which is what fear uses, is different to self-discipline because imposed discipline will get you to the place where when somebody's watching, you'll do it right. When they're not watching, you'll do whatever you want. Correct. Self-discipline says you're going to be consistent. You're going to be the same all the time. And so for me, you know, I don't preach the fear message. Mm -hmm. I preach the faith message. I preach the hope message. I preach the dream again hope again, live again, mm -hmm. you know, that's a message I preach. Uh, and yes, at the end, there is a consequence. Uh, but if, if I can get you to have a relationship with God, as opposed to a relationship with a religion, mm -hmm. that's a big difference. Yep. Uh, so yeah, uh, talking about the pushback, yes, a lot of pushback. But I think that's a tragedy of, of um, not being tolerant. Uh, not being open to understanding or open to discover. Uh, and so we, we stuck in an old method, an old message. Uh, the message of the Bible for me doesn't change. Mm -hmm. I don't preach a different Bible. I preach only out of the Bible. Actually, all my coaching principles come out of the Bible. I don't do scriptures. I don't preach to people. I coach people. Uh, but I've learned a lot, uh, especially out of the book of Proverbs. Uh, there's wisdom for everyone in there. Mm -hmm. uh, but I, I talk about a relationship. Now, there's two things, Lawrence, that people, humans uh, need. Number one, they need a hero. Every mind needs a hero. Mm -hmm. That's why we love sports, right? Yep. Uh, <laughs> that team, that person, that Michael Jordan, you know, that Kobe, you know. Yep. Uh, 
Look at that funeral with Kobe. Wow. Mm. I mean, I know it's crazy. Crazy because every mind needs a hero and every being needs to be heard. Mm -hmm. Religion gives you a hero, but doesn't let you be heard. Yep. I want a combination of both. I want you to have a hero. I want you to love God. I want you to serve God. But I also want you to be heard. Mm -hmm. I want you to have a voice. I want you to have a choice. Uh, these things are virtuous things. Uh, you, Lawrence, being free to choose uh, is a gift uh, given to you. You know, uh, so I'm not going to try and convince you otherwise uh, in your belief system. Uh, I want to be a attractive to everyone I meet. Yep. And I think that's, again, my, my uh, as a Christian point of view, you know, uh, as a, a, a if you study Christ, uh, you're gonna, they're going to ask two questions about Christ. Who is this man? Mm -hmm. And what must I do with him? Yep. When you meet me, Lawrence, I want you to ask two questions. <laughs> Who is this Israel guy, man? And what must I do with him? Pretty I, can't, much. I can't get him out of my head. I, I, you know, <laughs> I, got, I got to do so. And when I meet Lawrence, that's what I've got to ask too. Yep. Who is this man? And I think that if you can be that person that had that influence, and that impact on society where, where you walk in the room and they say, wow, who's that guy? Yep. Who's that girl? And then when you speak with them, they, they don't forget what you said. Mm -hmm. Had a major influence. And I think that's far better. We spoke about Instagram, the cultures, you know, that's far better than, than being famous uh, is being influential. Correct. Totally agree with that. Yeah. So I want to encourage guys who are watching it at a, Go out and be influential, whether it's your brother, your sister, uh, in your family, or, or whether it's your friend down the road, or, or whether it's a businessman somewhere. Mm -hmm. Be influential, because that's going to keep you coming back and back and back and back in the picture of their lives. Correct, because they will want you there as being an influence. Right. But someone that is a positive influence will always be asked to come back. Someone right. that's Absolutely. famous, someone that is famous might not necessarily. Famous doesn't get you in the door. Famous just right. get your just get your name known by people right, and stuff like right. that, and and right. you see it all the time of true influences or true inspiring people that they they're always there, they're always welcome, they're always asked to come back, they're always at the key moments, the key championship moments. Those guys and girls are brought into the picture and said, okay, now we 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 right. need you to influence us in the right way, and it's Absolutely. and it's and it's not the it's not pulling the famous person. It's, no. it's, it's not putting the person that's worth the most money. It's the person that can do the right influence in the right manner um, that offers it to everyone else. Absolutely. Absolutely. Be an so, influencer. That's it. Yep. So as, as we already pushed uh, past half an hour for today, Israel, uh, before you know, we run off um, the end of the show, I wanted to see from you what is sort of five minutes or so, what is sort of some insights to my listeners at the moment and to anyone that's watching or listening is that you would like to leave them with uh, thoughts for today, this week, this month. What is something that you would like to say out to them at the moment? Right. Thank you. Yeah, I think... Uh, the simple message is you are going to make it. Mm -hmm. Tomorrow is going to come. Uh, but if you want to make it with effect, if you want to make it tomorrow better than you were today, then you have to begin to bring some measure of change to your life. Uh, and we're not talking about a big change necessarily or a lot of change, but a change. And I, I would like to suggest the thought that change in the way you think mm -hmm. is a key to your going forward. Uh, we have a framework of thought, every one of us, and that framework of thought is our belief system. That belief system will govern us and control us. In other words, if we believe that we are a failure, then you will be a Fair. failure. Right. Uh, I heard this little story about a tattoo artist who was giving discounts. There was a plaque outside his, his shop saying, uh, uh, free tattoo today, loser. <laughs> and so this confident coach went in and said to the, the tattoo artist, whoever wants to put loser on their body, 
permanently. And the tattoo artist says, ah, first tattoo in mind, then tattoo on body. Yeah. First loser here, then you put loser here. And so changing the way you think is vital to your journey forward. Yep. And so if you think bad about yourself, you've got to change the narrative. You've got to start talking different about yourself to yourself because it's your belief system. And when you change that, then you will go out uh, and become something completely different. Uh, change the way you think. It will change the way you behave. And it will change your results. Remember, your thinking is your belief system. It governs you. Yeah, I love that, um, Israel. That's a great point to put out there and leave all the people on the show at the moment with as well. And, and I thank you for that. Um, as always, I ask, can you let our listeners and the watchers know at the moment if they're interested in to get in contact with you, where they can find you um, on so, either on social media or website, where's the best, best way to reach out to you? Uh, find me on Instagram, Israel Magukin. Uh, you can go to my website, which is www.drisraelmagookin, that's D-R for doctor, drisraelmagookin.com, uh, uh, and you can reach out to me on those platforms. Uh, thank you so much, Israel. It, it was a great discussion today about, you know, it, it was an interesting discussion to me and a really nice one because it's the first time that I've actually been able to sit with someone that is very high and very driven in a religious side but it's not imposing on my personal side uh, for the way of my beliefs and understanding and it and it's been thoroughly enjoyable because you've been showing of how there is certain mistakes in religion itself but you're looking to improve it to improve the person as they stand not actually say hey here's here's a book follow this book and i'm gonna hit you over the head with your book and that's only, the only thing that you can do about it and I must say, I thoroughly enjoyed it to show how uh, your leadership and your coaching through that section, as well as in your real coaching side, um, as, is just to fundamentally benefit people out there and make them a better Absolutely. version of themselves. And I thank you for that. My pleasure. And thank you, Lawrence, for having me on. I, I likewise, I thoroughly enjoyed it. Thank You're you. You're a wonderful host. <laughs> Thank you so much, Israel. And to everyone else today um, that has joined us on the audio podcast or the uh, YouTube series, thank you again for coming over to the Wolf of Queen Street. And as I always say, I don't ask anything. I don't charge anything um, to, to anyone that's listening out there. But if something today resonates with you, something today of the last week or any message in my brand resonates with you, all I say to you is tell someone else to come on over. Tell someone else to come and have a listen or share it to someone so they can see this message about people giving away their tips and tricks about how to be successful, how to find yourself, and how to be yourself in today's world. But at the end of the day, have a beautiful and loving day, and we'll chat to you later. Cheers. Cheers.